Hello and a warm welcome to Sharad Chandra IAS Academy, where your dreams are our mission. This is Yathar here. In today's video, we'll be talking about two topics. The first one is the India and Nepal border issue. We'll consider mapping portion here as well as the historical events that led to the situation and what is the way forward for this. Second thing, we'll be seeing the West Nile fever in Kerala. So focusing more on the disease itself, the West Nile fever. All right, so we'll see what uh, is the cause factor, what is the treatment, what is the geographical implications related to this. Okay, so let's start. So let's first see what we are going to cover. So Nepal mapping relation to India, relative to India. We'll be seeing important passes and so. Then what is the issue between India and Nepal? Which area is disputed and why? All right, the why is although not important in the present context, what's more important is what can it lead for, for both the countries. What can it lead to for both the countries? Then we'll be talking about the Anglo-Nepal war, which caused this issue mostly, and the Sugali Treaty. All right, the river Kali, that is very, very important when it comes to the mapping. Then economic blockade, which happened in 2015, because of something similar that Nepal did, a move that Nepal took, and made some constitutional changes. So we'll see how India and Nepal are deeply connected regardless of their issues. Next, we'll be talking about the West Nile fever in and all. And overall, we'll just sum up the thing. Okay, so let's uh, make it a quick lecture. So recently, Nepal has... What is the cause of the issue right now? That Nepal's cabinet last week decided to put a map on its 100 rupees currency note. So this is the Nepal's 100 rupee currency note. We don't have any meaning to it right now. But we just need to know that recently there has been an update in this. Okay, what is the update that they are trying to put a map on this? And the map will be containing as per the cabinet decision some areas. The areas which are either disputed between India and Nepal or otherwise the areas which are controlled right now are administrated by India in our state of the Uttarakhand. Alright, so what is this? So it's basically uh, they are trying to say that these are the part of our country indirectly they are trying to say even directly so and it has provoked a reaction from India. Alright, so what is our uh, external affairs minister saying? He's saying that such unilateral moves such unilateral moves. So it is the same as let's say India releases a note in which it shows that Nepal is, okay, it, we make a map and we say that Nepal is in India. Okay, so that is a unilateral move and that is not very welcome, of course. And second thing, it will not change the reality on the ground. So we are talking about the ground and this is something, the ground reality, which India should also learn in respect to China. And we should also know that China is hugely supporting the Nepal in all the external affair matters right now. Okay, so territorial dispute. What is the territorial dispute? What is the thing on the ground? What is the difference between things on ground and things on the map? So let's see this. All right. So here we can see, first of all, let's have an idea where Nepal is located. So this is the border between the Nepal and India here. We can see the state of Uttarakhand that is touching boundaries with Nepal. So this is the first state that is touching boundaries with Nepal, Uttarakhand. We go here and we see the Uttar Pradesh. All right, so Uttarakhand came from Uttar Pradesh only. It was uh, separated. Then we see the Bihar. Okay. More states we see here, West Bengal as well as Sikkim. Okay, so these are the states. We have five states which are touching boundary with the Nepal. And this is a natural boundary, we can say. We'll see the Google map also here, 3D map. So this boundary is formed by the Kali River or the Sharda River. Okay. So this Kali River or the Sharda River makes a natural boundary between India and Nepal. And this is Nepal here, you can see. Okay, so this is the relative position of the Nepal with respect to India. We have five states which are touching the boundaries. Which one? Uttarakhand. Here's the issue. Second one is Uttar Pradesh. Third is Bihar. Then we see the West Bengal. And finally the Sikkim. Okay, Sikkim is a, let's say like a potato between a sandwich, two breads. So here we can see Nepal and Bhutan, this side. Okay, so Sikkim is just right here. 
and this is also very important uh, portion the doklam plateau etc you can see here okay so this is the relative position of the nepal when it comes to india now let's talk about what is the reason that is causing the issue so here is this tri junction region okay so now we saw that nepal is looking like this with respect to india and this all is why uh, this all here is china okay and this all here is uttarakhand or india so there is a tri junction area here the tri junction area between china nepal and the india okay so here we see this thing so this is nepal this is the west northern border of the nepal this is india we have uttarakhand here just for the reference now you may be able to understand this better then we see multiple important things here this is the kalapani area this kalapani area is disputed between which two countries nepal and india nepal as well as india so india has some uh, army camps here and there okay second thing is this limpia dhura this area is rather disputed okay and the third area disputed is this lipulek pass this is also known as the kailash mansarovar pass or something okay so this is very important portion here there is a talk uh, between connecting these both areas okay so these areas come in the disputed range of india and nepal okay next uh, let us see the same map but a different uh, uh, view so this is indo nepal border until a new map is published okay new map means there is some boundary talks going between india and nepal so this is the on ground situation this is the situation on the ground so these general areas please remember this is the kali river okay kali river we will be reading about this is the indo nepal border until a new map is published this is the current border on the ground reality this is the kalapani area this is the lipu lake pass and tinker so these areas please remember where they are located in general and also remember that they are disputed between india and nepal but on the ground india has more to say here all right okay let's go next next we see that after amending its constitution to adopt a new map nepal established an army barrack near kalapani and open a road there okay so it is desiring that what it is desiring it's trying to connect these both areas the lipulek pass with the kalapani area and then make a tri junction border here with the changru nepal border outpost okay so essentially what is it trying to keep this disputed area or extend its boundary here also okay so slowly take and take more area as per its constitutional changes and so on okay so this is the lipulek pass please remember this very very important uh, mapping uh, let's say location then kalapani nepal to build an army barrack here and this is the indian route it's strategically beefed up with new bridges and recently inaugurated so there's a clash sort of thing going on here okay and this is china china has oversight on on uh, everything that is going on here so this area is also disputed okay so three areas we saw the limpidhura plus the lipulek pass and the kalapani all right next go forward and see that why is it not so easy to solve these issues because the terrain here is like this the terrain here is like this this is the lipulek pass this is the area of china and then we see here that all of the terrain is like mountains and valleys mountains and valleys it's not like a simple flat region where you can just go and uh, let's say demarcate a boundary or line a fence that okay we will not go here you will not go there all right so this uh, is the issue between india and nepal right now let's go further and also see or uh, talk about the sharda river so this is the sharda river you can see here a boundary is formed this is a natural boundary that is formed between india and nepal okay so the this northern or western bank of the sharda river or the kali river it is the same river is what demarcates a natural boundary between nepal and india so please remember all these uh, locations which i shown you on the map so now uh, this is the map which indian express also provided very recently so this is the kalapani area we see here the sharda river uh, area in dispute nothing else i have just tried to include more and more maps so you can revise and remember all of these things okay so three areas limpidhura then the lipulek pass and the kalapani area okay this can ask be uh, this can be asked in prelims because kalapani is mostly associated with the cellular jail of andaman and nicobar okay now let us uh, focus on other things that what is the history of this issue 
okay where does the issue originate from where does it come from so what we see that this everything come from the anglo nepalese wars which wars anglo nepalese wars so there was a gurkha kingdom earlier established gurkha kingdom in nepal okay i'll show you the map here of the gurkha kingdom just a second so here is the gorkha empire or the gorkha kingdom so right now what has been restricted till here it was also extended earlier till here so that was their previous glory okay this area is under uh, most of it is under india now like this okay some of it is under china now and so nepal has lost this area over time this was the peak uh, when the gorkha empire was in its peak and even the sikkim was under the gorkha empire as you can see here okay so nepal has lost much area in recently 200 years because of this anglo nepalese wars so these wars lasted during the year 1814 to 1816 okay and initially the gurkhas enjoyed much victory over the british okay even the british were impressed by the victories of the gurkhas even uh, till date they uh, let's say admit them into the army and all okay even uh, multiple countries the american uh, america's army and the british army they all have a gurkha regiment in them all right so now we see that nepal is a skilled fighter known as gurkhas initially enjoyed success pulling uh, pushing back the british forces however what happened later the british eventually prevailed due to superior resources and military tactics so who won at the end the british won okay and british victory came with two things the annexation of area the annexation of area and second thing is the treaty of sogali treaty of sogali so what came as terms of treaty of sogali two things again treaty of sogali please remember this was during or this treaty essentially stopped the anglo nepalese wars okay so this was in 1816 1816 fairly early we can say and this was the time when uh, uh, let's say the british gained so much power in the indian some indian subcontinent when even they started other countries attacking other countries okay so what uh, nepal had to do it had to cede some territories first of all it cede some territories this was the first thing okay and uh, uh, actually nepal uh, won some territories in the west so the same territories it had to cede okay from the british and agreed its eastern expansion agreed to limit its eastern expansion so both side the british controlled the nepal this side also and this side also from here it had to cede the territories which it won and from here it had to stopped its expansion okay next thing is nepal remained an independent kingdom british did not uh, go to nepal to rule it okay because it was very very small had no nothing to give all right but what happened that there was a british resident established in kathmandu the capital of nepal british resident and nepal's foreign policy was in the hands of british after this okay the foreign policy was in the hands of british so essentially they made it a domestic country so article 5 of the same treaty we'll just talk it here article 5 of the same treaty took away the jurisdiction of nepal ruler over the land to the east of the kali river east of the kali river okay so let's talk about this kali river what is this kali river so kali river is also known as the sharda river we'll see here this sharda river just a second okay so kali river or sharda river basically sharda river is the downstream of the kali river okay let's see where does it originate it is also known as the mahakali river but really large in size and it originates in the northern uttarakhand state of india and the great himalayas in the great himalayas which is state uttarakhand in india so this is also a disputed region it uh, originates near the kalapani region okay so it's in disputed uh, region and uh, on the eastern slope of the nanda devi massif its elevation is also very high uh, 3600 meters okay in the pithorgarh district it then flows between the india and nepal border this same kali river is also known as the kuti yangti kuti yangti in the nepal so now what issue happened when did the issue start taking place 
that earlier this river i'll just erase this so earlier this river and this area was under the jurisdiction of nepal okay this whole area was under the jurisdiction of nepal but in 1962 1962 there was a war between the china and india and it is said that the indian uh, prime minister jawaharlal nehru okay he went to the king mahindra of nepal asking for permission to use this kalapani area for indian army as it was a strategic point okay and it is said that from the nepal the king mahindra gifted this uh, thing to this area to the india okay later on multiple things happened multiple maps were released but this issue was not resolved both india and nepal claim it for various different reasons all right now what happens further that uh, he is indra kumar Guj uh, gujral a former prime minister of india is atal bihari bajpay i hope you all must be knowing okay so this issue has been very very old now what happened indra kumar gujral had promised to give up these areas if nepal were able to produce evidence for its claims okay so he was saying that india has claim on this area okay and they tried to solve it also in july 2000 prime minister atal bihari bajpay also assured the visiting nepal pm uh, gp koirala that india had no interest in even an inch of nepal's territory or nepali territory but what is the caveat here that it has to be nepali territory but we are considering it indian territory we are considering it indian territory so here the dispute also remains same and even during the time of uh, prime minister modi the dispute has also been the same uh, since or uh, let's say for the last 10 years or so okay now what we see uh, in 2015 a crisis happened okay what happens when two countries have such issues so in 2015 a crisis happened for around 134 days there was an economic blockade uh, which is said to be done by india to nepal okay because the fuel and all goes to nepal from india side only so india blocked this fuel and all okay fuel and shipment and nepal had much disaster in the form of an economic crisis for multiple months okay why this happened because they made some changes in their constitution which was not sitting right with uh, some people uh, known as the madheshi people and these madheshi people <coughs> they are ethnic minority there in the nepal they live in the tarai region of the nepal and they even keep coming to india sometimes for trade and all okay the border is rather porous and they keep coming to india and all so what happened that uh, the nepal made some changes in the constitution and it affected the constitutional rights of the madheshi people and india was not very happy with this so india did what india caused this economic blockade and it affected nepal very grievously so this is the issue that happened between india and nepal now it has been resolved of course it has been much time but uh, nepal can go through something like this again if it doesn't uh, strengthen its own economic resources so next let's come to the important news again the west nile fever okay so why we are talking about the west nile fever because it has been detected in kerala something a disease a syndrome a condition uh, that is caused by the mosquito bite mosquito bite okay so the vector is mosquito here it's not producing the virus it is the vector vector is the carrier of the virus so please remember the first thing that a virus is causing this it's not a bacterial disease it's not a pathogenic disease let's say it is a viral disease okay of course the virus can act as a pathogen the pathogen is basically what generates a pathologic condition and patho means disease patho means some disease so virus can be a pathogen but there are multiple uh, more common forms of pathogen that does not belong to it it is a virus and what type of virus single stranded rna virus single stranded rna virus let's also categorize this virus it is known as a flavi virus it is known as a flavi virus and this virus is also related to the virus family which also causes the japanese encephalitis japanese encephalitis as well as the yellow fever yellow fever what is encephalitis encephalitis means some infection in the layers of the brain okay some infection in the layers of brain or brain fever so how does this thing operate okay this is the structure of the virus you can see here the single stranded rna virus i hope you already know there is a genetic material two types of genetic material is there one is the rna 
ribo nucleic acid and one is the dna deoxy ribose nucleic acid so there is a change of sugar and oxygen molecule okay oxygen atom you can uh, see about this what is the difference between rna and dna uh, dna dna is often double stranded helical type structure and rna is single stranded it coils onto itself okay it has simple simpler structure okay now let's see that how this cycle performs itself so mosquitoes become infected although no symptoms will occur in mosquito but does mosquito become infected yes so mosquito become infected when they feed on infected birds okay so it's coming let's say from the birds itself let's say okay the virus is in birds so when a mosquito sucks the blood it becomes infected now the mosquito is itself infected let's say this is a mosquito okay now what it uh, will do it either will bite a human it is most commonly seen either in human or horses this fever okay and they will develop some symptoms now another mosquito will come and bite a bird and this cycle will continue and so on so what is the medium that is carrying this virus the medium here is blood medium here is blood directly so it will not spread via contact it will also not spread via sneezing or coughing or so okay so there has been no known cases of a spread by contact with infected human or animal okay it will also not spread by eating the animal itself so what will happen how does it spread either by the blood transfusion or by the mosquito itself mosquito vector itself so here you can see the japanese encephalitis and common symptoms so the same symptoms happen the muscle pain body ache headache neurological sequel in the immunocompromised people okay painful neck stiffness and here you can see the trans primary transmission cycle bird to mosquito and then mosquito to human or horse okay and if the same mosquito or other mosquito bites this infected blood then it becomes an infected mosquito which can again bite a bird and this cycle continues okay now let's see what are the symptoms of this disease so asymptomatic in 80% of the population 80% of the population well and good no issues okay 20% of the population will become affected okay what will uh, let's say what will they feel they will feel headache fatigue in the muscle okay other things like body ache uh, nausea rashes swollen glands other other things okay and many little people let's say 2 to 3% people those who are immunocompromised people may even die okay this can prove fatal if it gets to your brain if encephalitis takes place okay so 1 in 150 people infected with the west nile uh, fever will develop a more severe form of the disease all right now let's talk about the treatment so as as there is no treatment the body will fight itself with the virus for there is no treatment for the viral disease and so also please remember that virus are only alive inside the body or inside the medium outside in the environment virus are considered to be dead virus are considered to be dead they are just molecules doing their work just a hardware all right with no life they have a computerized hardware like system when they go inside your body they become activated and do the work so quite a, a technological marvel of biology we can say so no treatment as such is available control the mosquitoes prevent the vectors from originating and carrying the disease all right have some uh, let's say more hygiene in the environments and just supportive treatment is available now let's say why it is known as the west nile fever so it originated in africa the virus originated in africa from the mutations in the uganda it was first seen here in the west nile district this is the west nile district of the uganda okay so it was first isolated in a women in west nile district in uganda in 1937 in 1937 so how did it come to other countries from the birds itself because birds do migrate birds do migration and from migration it came to north america canada and then it spread all over the world like uh, let's say by 1960s 1970s it was more found in the world then it came actually to israel tunisia these to new york in uh, let's say 40 to 50 years it was starting to be observed in all over the world so there have been major uh, migratory routes which have followed this transmission pathway it's now commonly found in africa europe middle east north america and west asia in india it was uh, as you can see that uh, from the 
Uganda. It came to this uh, Israel and Tunisia. And from here it came to this America, New York and so on, Canada. So now it's found almost everywhere. In the Asia also now it's fine. Okay, so in India, when we are talking about the first time in India, it was found in Mumbai in 1952. In Mumbai in 1952. But since then it has been mostly observed in the southern states such as Kerala. Okay, right now it has been observed in the Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, Maharashtra, Karnataka and now there is an outbreak in Kerala. A person has died there. So this is the most important points about the West Nile fever. Uh, so this is about today's lecture. I will be seeing you in the next lecture. Thank you very much. Have a great day ahead. It's Yathartir signing off. Study well and have a great day.